Yo, what is up, guys? Your boy here. Today I'm reacting to um. Let me focus the screen. Okay, it's story of Doug Hauser explained dark deception theories by Super Horror Bro. So I don't know what to expect from this video. Just by the title of it, I'm gonna assume this um probably the origins of Doug Hauser and like how did he end up in Beerus's ballroom. But but yeah, guys. Um, everything in the description down below. Make sure to subscribe to Super Horror Bro. And without further ado, let's begin. I just need to turn up the volume. Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's video, Mike. we take a look at Dark Deception and its central protagonist, Doug Hauser. Much of a conversation surrounding Smiley. Dark Deception's mysterious plot often focuses on the conflict between Beas and Malak. Who are they, and what is their relationship to one another? Moreover, what does Beas want with us, and why are we collecting soul shards for her? We've covered these questions in previous videos and no doubt will continue to do so as the final two chapters launch and shed more light on the situation. However, with chapter 4 coming soon, I thought it would be interesting to explore our character Doug in today's video. His past, present and what the future of his story may hold for him. So sit back, relax and let's see if we can get to the bottom of who this mystery man is and what exactly happens to him. Alright, here we go. What we know about Doug. Let's begin with a brief synopsis of everything we currently know about Dark Deception's central protagonist. His name is Doug Hauser, and he served as a criminal court attorney. From oh. the secret notes hidden throughout the game, it sounds as if his position as a lawyer accrued him great wealth and power. As well as building himself a successful career in law, Doug was also a family man. He had a wife who remains nameless and a daughter called Tammy. For many people, having a family to build memories with is recipe enough for a happy and fulfilling life. However, Doug grew to resent his situation. You see, Doug's wife suffered from mental illness, and we are led to believe she was bipolar and prone to radical mood swings, which understandably put pressure on the marriage. The problem oh. was that Doug didn't want anything to do with his wife when things became too challenging for him. They drifted apart, and this caused Doug to spend more and more time away from his family. This in turn caused his daughter to suffer mentally, receiving a similar diagnosis to her mother. However, Tammy's mental health issues seem to stem more from a lack of a strong father figure in her life. At least if her account is to be believed that is. Check out this snippet from her doctor's notes. Patient does exhibit signs of depression and anxiety when asked about her father. She is convinced that he is ignoring her and is obsessed with his legal career. She believes that he wishes she didn't exist. With oh, such an erratic yikes. and unstable mother as her only source of parental guidance, it's no wonder Tammy began oh, acting whoa. up. Instead of trying to help his daughter and be there to support his suffering wife, Doug threw money at the problem and passed his child over to the care of a psychiatric ward and its doctors. Now this is most likely the reason nurses are to feature as one of the main antagonists in Chapter 4. The hospital stage they inhabit will likely resemble the psychiatric ward Doug abandoned his daughter to, albeit a crueler and more nightmare Oh whoa, version. epilepsy. He may have been good at handling high-pressured court cases, but there's one thing for sure. Doug was useless as a husband and a father. He deserved better than the life he oh, ended up with back. because of his successful career, and so began to plot as to how to remove his family from the equation. I want to be free from them, and I want to forget they exist as soon as possible. Thankfully, she's not very bright. Oh, may be away. damn. We have no official information from the game as to what happened next, but there are hints left by the developers as to the fate of Doug's family. In Chapter 2, while exploring Agatha's schoolhouse, we come across a secret room with a whiteboard. This board depicts the image of a car sailing off a cliff or bridge and into a body of water below. It also clearly labels the three people found within. The two in the car are Tammy and her mother, while the father Doug seems to be looking down on the carnage, a smile on his face. While none of these sketches are labelled by name, it seems likely this is showing us the fate of Doug's family. Based on his quote from earlier, she's not very bright, there might be a wet, it seems logical to conclude Doug may have tampered with the brakes on his wife's car, in effect oh. causing the accident herself when she couldn't brake properly. Adding credibility to this theory is a writing on the walls of this secret room, which feature phrases such as, no forgiveness, they trusted you, and heartless. 
Finally, an image has been teased for Chapter 4, which shows police cars parked on a bridge across a river. It looks as though this bridge may be based in New York City, a city we know Doug worked in based on the contents of his secret note discovered in Chapter 3. This image features the line, show me who you really, really are. are. This is most likely the scene of the accident where Doug's family died, and so this line would refer to Doug revealing his inner demons and the crime he committed. The final piece of information we know about Doug is found within the notes collected within the Crazy Carnival stage. Here we discover Doug's life spiralled out of control after losing his family. He became a monstrous character indeed, and was eventually arrested and charged. Listen to this excerpt from a newspaper report on the matter. Doug Hauser turned himself into police in New York City this morning to face sexual misconduct charges. He was subsequently arrested, processed and charged with criminal sex act, sex abuse and sexual misconduct for alleged incidents involving five separate women, police said. After losing his job and wealth, Doug was forced to reflect on this crooked life and his immoral choices. He came to the realization that he had been a fool and thrown away the only good thing he ever had, the love of his wife and daughter, who loved him unconditionally for who he was rather than what he had in his bank account. This led Doug to begin searching for a way to remedy the past and right the wrongs he caused, no matter the cost. The cost, not cast. Doug's origins. With everything we know about Doug now covered, it's time to move on to the second half of this video where we speculate and theorize on story elements to fill in the blanks and attempt to tell the complete story of the game ahead of time. Of course with the advent of chapter 4, this shady story is likely to become far clearer, but for now let's begin to connect the proverbial dots. To understand why Doug turned out the way he did, we have to look to his past, something Dark Deception has yet to touch on, but in my opinion, will do in chapter 4. We have seen certain stages touch on Doug's personality traits before, most notably his greed in the Goldwatcher Mansion. One of the stages that raises the it's most Mama questions Bear. in this upcoming chapter is surely Mama Bear's. Who is Mama Bear and what exactly does she represent? Mama Bear is coming to get you. Oh dear God, no. This creepy bear is most likely a nightmarish rendition of Doug's own mother, a woman who may well have treated him cruelly as a child. Oh no, here we go again. This is a common association Sorry, that guys. men who grow up to be misogynistic and abusive towards women, as we know Doug was, often behave that way because they have a hatred towards Stop. them, stemming from a poor mother figure during childhood. If Doug's mother was abusive toward him, then it certainly explains his cruel and calculating demeanor as an adult. It also means that Mama's stage represents a journey through Doug's tormented childhood. So with this in mind, does this mean that Chapter 4 in general will be all about Doug's origins? The events that led up to him growing into the tyrant of a man he was? Perhaps Joy Joy Land and the Joy Joy Gang are indeed something from oh. Doug's own childhood, and the asylum not only a representation of an institution he placed his daughter inside, but also one he spent some time in himself at some point in his life. We'll have to wait and see to know for sure, and it also makes us speculate as to whether at some point Doug may have to face his biggest demon of all, that of his family themselves. We did have a teaser from Glowstick on the official Dark Deception Twitter account. It showed the silhouette of a young girl standing on a hill, a crimson red background behind her. This may foreshadow Doug's eventual run-in with his wife and child in the final chapter of the game, a demon he may finally not be able to outrun. It's possible. How did Doug get here? One thing we also need to consider is how Doug came to find himself in Beers' ballroom, dipping into these nightmare portals and collecting soul shards. From listening to Beers' diary entries, we know she became trapped here after summoning Malak in order to achieve fame and fortune during her career as a Hollywood actress. I called and Malak answered. He listened to my plea and tried to bargain with me as Victor said he would. Finally, we came to an arrangement. Seven years and a day. After that, my soul was forfeit. She achieved this by sacrificing Aww. her maid's daughter and performing a ritual. However, the time came for her soul to be given over to the demon, and she decided to opt out of their deal. Locating a device known as the Riddle of Heaven, or Ring Altar, which seems to have held off Malak for the time being, leaving her soul in limbo and requiring her to enlist the help of another in order to complete the altar and set her free. 
This could mean that Doug also killed and sacrificed an innocent and then summoned Beers to allow him the chance to save his own family. Again, we don't know for sure, but Doug did save the following. I just wish there was a way to see them one more time. Just give me one last chance to right my biggest wrong before I go. I'm not sure that's even possible, but I'd pay any price to find out. This certainly hmm. sounds like the monologue of a desperate man willing to do just about anything to correct the wrongs of his past. Could this have involved the same occult practices as Beas dabbled in herself? Quite possibly, but again, just a theory for now. Beas has promised Doug a way to get his family back if he succeeds in granting her Malak's near infinite power. Complete the ring, and you can use Malak's power to fulfill your darkest desires. We have to speculate as to whether she intends to actually uphold her end of the deal, or rather if she is simply using Doug as a pawn in her own game, getting him to complete the dangerous part of the task and then escaping through the ring altar and perhaps leaving Doug alone in her place. So would Doug take Beers' place in a future sequel, hoping to trick the next unlucky soul to come along into helping him out so he may finally escape this limbo himself? These are all just musings right now, and I do hope this video has given you some food for thought and also elaborated on a character we don't know too much about. As always, if you did enjoy the video, remember mm. to like, comment, and subscribe for more horror-related content, and I will see you on the next video. So yeah, guys, that 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 theory video makes uh, a lot more sense like, now that I think about it, because the fact that beers and stuck in the ballroom but yeah Doug might um I have a bad ending or something but that's all a theory but anyway thank you guys so much for watching make sure to give this a like and subscribe and turn that bell notification on and um with that being said I'll see you guys next time goodbye